Hi, welcome to Lagoons Do a Better TV, where we provide bite-sized segments to help your lagoon do it better. I'm Patrick Hill today, I'm flying solo, but today I'm gonna talk about uh, lagoon odors. Um, you know, there's a common perception, lagoons stink, uh, and some people think lagoons don't work because they smell, and, and it frustrates me as a, as a lagoonatic. You know, I love lagoons, and really the fact of the matter is that a properly functioning lagoon shouldn't smell. Um, and so, Today we're going to talk about the symptoms, you know, the types of smells, the causes, and some of the solutions that are available for lagoon owners if they do have some odor issues. So first, the symptoms. The, these smells tell us something. In fact, if you look up the EPA design guide for lagoons, design operation guide for lagoons, they outline what different smells there are and what that's telling you about your, your lagoon. So the basic typical smell is more of an earthy type smell and you'll stand up there on the berm and you'll be looking down at this lagoon and you get this kind of nice earthy odor and that's a really, really good sign. That's the sign your lagoon's doing well. It's a sign that bacterial growth is occurring. Um, so it's not something to worry about. It's not something that's gonna bother the neighbors. Now, if you get kind of a, a fishy or grassy smell, typically that's the sign of algae growth. Uh, and that again is uh, not necessarily a, from an odor perspective, the thing that gets the phone ringing, um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. All lagoons have algae to some extent. Obviously, if you have overpopulation of algae, you can go ahead and uh, look at our blog on, on lagoon algae, um, or our, our video blog on lagoon algae, which will be in this feed. Um, the real concerning odor that you get is the, you know, septic, uh, egg, rotten egg type smelling odor. And that is very much a sign of sulfur bacteria growth, which is in turn a sign of uh, anaerobic digestion going on at the bottom. So it's anaerobic digestion is, is breaking down uh, BOD or sludge and without oxygen, and that's causing this um, sulfur dioxide and some of the H2S uh, hydrogen sulfide to be released, and that's what causes odors. That's what gets the phone ringing, and that's what really, really frustrates people. So what causes this? Well, I've touched on it briefly before. Part of this could be just overloading of the lagoon. And, and you know, we see this in industrial applications quite a bit. You know, they built the lagoon 10, 15, maybe 20 years ago, and the loading that was designed for is much lower than the loading they're seeing today, and that will cause odors. Um, because if you do not give this, uh, you don't have a proper amount of oxygen in the water, it'll start to break down anaerobically and cause these uh, sulfur producing uh, bacteria growths um, that, that, that really bother the neighbors. So that's a, that is the one of the most common ones we see. The second one is sludge buildup. So it's very typical to see lagoons that are 30 years old. And you know, there is a certain amount of sludge storage built into a lagoon system. That's how lagoons deal with solids. However, if you never desludge and you get more and more and more and more and more sludge buildup, there's a lot of more and more organic loading on the system that's building up over time because it can't be treated fast enough and that causes odors to, to occur because that sludge will break down anaerobically. And the third most, and this is perhaps the most common thing we see, is lagoon turnover. And that is a process where during the summer and in the fall and in the spring, you get thermal stratification of water, right? So you get colder water on the bottom, for example, in the summertime, and, it, and then it starts to get warmer and warmer and warmer until it gets to the top. And when you get to the fall, for example, and it starts to get cold outside, that water at the surface starts to drop down and mix with the water on the bottom and it causes what we call a turnover condition. And in those circumstances, uh, you can often get a, a flash of odor uh, for a week or two in the fall or in the spring. And uh, we get calls on this every year. We get spikes on our blog posts for, for lagoon odor every year we, that we see this. And, and that's a very, very common cause of lagoon odor. And typically it's only temporary. So solutions. Well, one of the most obvious solutions is to increase aeration. And uh, the reason for this is because if you can get dissolved oxygen in the water, and if you can get some mixing in the water, you will convert that anaerobic condition that's causing that nasty odor into an aerobic condition, which is gonna, which the byproduct of which is carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is essentially an odorless gas. 
So that is a uh, number one thing that you can do. Now, I recognize that not everybody has the money in the budget to, uh, to add aeration to their, to their system, right? Um, and if you can, then there are other things you can do. You can circulate the water more. You know, you can get a pump on the side, a trash pump, or any other kind of pump that you have, and pump out of it and pump back into it, right? And I've even seen folks that will pull water out and just kind of spray it up into the air back into the lagoon. And that can just create some circulation effect, try to get some of that sludge moving, and try to, to, to circulate water from the top of the lagoon down to the bottom of the lagoon. So you get that higher oxygen water at the top, and uh, you're sucking off the bottom, the lower oxygen layer on the bottom, and just try to circulate. And sometimes that can be good enough to get rid of, uh, to, to get rid of the odors. Uh, sometimes it can, sometimes it can't. Other things you can do is put baffles in. You know, sometimes we see that if you can just direct the flow better through the lagoon, uh, you can mitigate odors by just improving treatment using baffle curtains. Um, Bio augmentation is also another approach that you can use. Uh, our friends over at Aquafix sell uh, different products that can help break down your sludge blanket or help you treat BOD more efficiently and effectively, uh, and even add oxygen with their oxy packs temporarily. Uh, and that can usually get you over a short-term uh, odor uh, issue. Now, if you're doing that every single year all the time, then those small costs to buy that bio augmentation stuff can add up and, and sometimes they're not as good of a solution and they're only band-aiding the problem that you have that either your lagoon's overloaded or you need to remove sludge. Um, and so that th they, they can be helpful for a, for a short-term solution, but as a long-term solution, they can be almost more expensive in the long run. So I caution a little bit with that, but if you only get this two, three weeks a year on um, the spring or the fall, then certainly bioaugmentation can be a really, really good short-term solution. Uh, and finally, you know, you can cover the lagoon. And you can put, you know, I've seen folks put gas collection covers on it, you know, and assuming that, that treatment through the lagoon is not your issue, that, that your BOD effluent requirement, your meeting uh, with your current condition, then covering and collecting that gas uh, in one place uh, can often be a good solution. You can flare or burn the gas, or you can even use it for cogeneration, depending on how much gas you're collecting. Uh, and that's common to see in uh, in applications where you have hog, you know, uh, waste going into the lagoon, like uh, you know, hog feces and things like that, um, or or cow or cow waste. Um, we see a lot of that in the in the, in the sort of agricultural uh, field. So um, ultimately. You know, I think that the biggest slam dunk for most municipal systems and a lot of industrial systems is, is the adoration. And often that is really the smartest thing to do because it's gonna increase the amount of treatment you can get within the same footprint and it's gonna mitigate the odor at the same time. Um, and so, uh, you know, if you are interested in that, we do have our Mars aeration system, uh, which is a very efficient and effective uh, uh, mixer and aerator from an oxygen point of view. Oftentimes by deploying the Mars, if you had surface aerators before, you can typically save about 60% on your energy costs by adding the Mars system. And it is a surefire solution to get rid of odors. So if you're interested, please contact us. We'd love to help you out. If not, I hope you found this blog, either way, I hope you found this blog, uh, video blog quite useful. If you have any further questions, feel free to put them in the feed down here. Um, or just you know, reach out uh, to us via email. Uh, you can go to tpenv.com. And, and also, uh, you know, this is one video blog that we have. We have several others. Feel free to bro uh, browse our page. We have an active blog we post on twice every month on different lagoon topics. If there's lagoon topics you want information on that there's not a lot of information out there on, please reach out. We're always looking for good lagoon uh, topics to video blog on or write our blogs on. Um, so I just encourage you to subscribe to our blog and subscribe to this video blog because we got a lot of useful things going on. Finally, we also have a Facebook group called our Lagoons Do It Better Facebook group. Feel free to join that. Uh, we're trying to connect operators with operators so you, that, that, that people can help each other and help them operate lagoons effectively because ultimately we want to see all lagoons uh, do it better. Thanks for your time and I'll see you next time.